Time now for business. We cross to the World Economic Forum in Davos. The Chinese vice president, one of the big draws of this uh, Wednesday. There was also uh, the uh, uh, Japanese prime minister, Angela Merkel of Germany, Giuseppe Conte and Pedro Sanchez of Italy and Spain. Stephen Carroll is there. Uh, Stephen, China's Wang Kishan had a chance to respond to some fairly sharp criticism of Beijing that we heard the previous day from uh, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. That's right. Wang Shishan was a little bit more measured in his response to Mike Pompeo. First of all, in his main speech, he did make reference to one of the biggest issues in the trade talks between the US and Washington. That's technology and what technology policy should be and national security policy around technology. Essentially, his point was is that countries should be allowed to set their own rules for protecting technology uh, and that whole area and that there is a need to rebalance the relationship as regards technology, which is largely uh, American dominated towards the rest of the world, so there wouldn't be a monopoly on innovation. That's mirroring something that Mike Pompeo said yesterday about rebalancing the US-China trade relationship. Uh, Wang Shishan did say that there was going to be mutual benefits to continuing the relationship with China. So there was some cause for optimism in those comments there, but certainly what felt like a more measured response from the Chinese vice president. Lots of other things, uh, lo lots of other big speeches happening today. Uh, we had the, as you said, Pedro Sanchez, the Spanish Prime Minister, just finished speaking there a few minutes ago. Uh, him making a defence of saying needing, needing uh, that uh, essentially the economy needs to serve the people, needs to serve the people in a different way, needing to change the way that the um, that the globalisation works to benefit more people. A message that we've heard repeated many times uh, over the past couple of days in Davos. Uh, he was strangely pro-European, though something that would have echoed with Angela Merkel, who was speaking a little bit earlier. She was defending the international order, defending the institutions that exist, defending multilateralism, but also conscious of the major challenges that Germany faces. She talked about uh, energy. Uh, she also mentioned, interestingly, the transformation in the auto industry that's happening. Of course, a big industry in Germany saying that there needs to be more of, uh, I suppose, a cognizance of what's happening as regards data in the revolution that's happening in the auto industry. And that's something that I've been discussing with Michelle Avery. She's the head of autonomous and urban mobility at the World Economic Forum in their fourth and Industrial Revolution Centre, where they research this, and I've been discussing some of the quandaries around self-driving cars with her. Different aspects when you think about regulations in dealing with the policy. One is at the federal, the nation state level, which is involving the manufacturer of the vehicle. Can we make cars without steering wheels? Can we change the headlights? These questions need to be addressed at the federal level. At the, the state level, it's more around operational licenses. You and I took driving tests. When we think about letting the computer code take over, what kind of test do we need to give to the computer code? Code, and how often should they be re-permitted? And then the third one is more at the municipal level. How do they operate in our city streets? Do we have dedicated lanes? Do we have special places to pull over? We assume that these will be operated as fleets, that we won't own them. It'll be a mobility as a service. There are ethical issues around this technology as well. The snap decisions made in situations on the road, which direction to go, you know, is it a case of saving the driver or saving the pedestrian in an accident? How is that being considered in the development of the technology? Addressing the quality of life issues and trust is a big aspect of autonomous vehicle technologies. And these are questions that we're asking and also addressing, not just through the technological methods, but also through the discussions we have with people. How far away are we from seeing this technology on the road for all of us? For all of us. Well, right now it's already on the road in Phoenix, Arizona with Waymo One. And it'll be launching in my home city of San Francisco this year with General Motors Cruise Automation. I think we're a while, a while away before it becomes a ubiquitous part of our lives. Privacy is an issue we're all thinking a little bit more about after the events of the past year. Are there data privacy issues around autonomous driving? Yes, there are. There's a lot about the technology that is video based and it's also internal to the cabin of the vehicle as well as external. And we definitely need to address how do we ensure not just the security of the vehicle, but also the privacy of the data and the transmission of it.
All right, so there we have it. Uh, by the way, Stephen Carroll, don't go far. We'll be crossing over to you in a short while in the France 24 debate to uh, talk about how the World Economic Forum is reacting to the growing calls to take on inequality.